This channel is proudly sponsored by Detri Studios, the publishers and developers of the Ames of Astoria, a tabletop RPG where you play as monster girls, experiencing high adventure in a world that doesn't fully accept them. They have recently released the Whispers of Copperidge Adventure module. You will find all of the links in the description and in the pinned comment. Hi! Welcome to this part of my review featuring the guide to the world grape. This is the Game Master and Setting Book for the Fathom Tabletop RPG. If you haven't seen the other parts of my review, please check out the playlist in the description below. This time we are going to talk about exploration. When it comes to travel, exploring the world is one of the most important and intriguing aspects of the gameplay in Fathom. From spelunking in forgotten chasms to swimming down the streets of Times Square, Travel is divided into four stages. First, choosing a destination, then plotting a course, followed by resolving the trouble, and finally wrapping up the journey. First, the players must have decided on somewhere they want to go in the world, and of course inform the game master, but I would recommend that you do this in character. Do not have an out of character conversation with a game master that is not there. Rather decide things in character, in fiction, such as So it is decided, my friends. Let us go to Times Square. You see? Next, you plot a course. Once a destination is selected, you determine the distance the party would need to travel there. Then, you resolve the travel. During this stage, the party will be setting out on their journey separated into days. Each day starts when the party completes a day rest and ends when they begin a day rest. If need be, the party may change their minds about the travel and abandon their current travels in order to begin a new one. Encounters are given to the party by the game master either randomly or they are chosen based on context by the game master. For each day the party has six travel actions that they can use for voluntary or forced encounters. During their journeys, the party can advance or interact with an encounter. They could try to sneak about, set up camp, take a quick rest, or knock on the world grave, which is rolling for an encounter. This is a very risky proposition because there are some encounters that simply cannot be avoided. A day's travel does not stop when a party runs out of travel actions. The party may exert themselves, gaining one fatigue each, and one travel action. For certain encounters, the party may need to expand the travel actions, such as a combat encounter or any forced encounters. If the party encounters a forced encounter while they have no more travel actions left, they must exert themselves until they acquire enough actions to interact with the encounter. During the travel, the party may decide to end their journey for the day and take a day rest. Once the party starts a day rest, their travel actions are set to zero. When preparing for a day rest, it is important to have alternating watches to reduce the risk of ambush or other encounters. Any number of players can choose not to sleep for any number of hours during the day rest to keep watch. While those players are keeping watch, the party cannot become surprised while resting. When it comes to wrapping up the journey, during the final stage, the Game Master should review the events of the travel, summarize any key moments, and integrate the outcome into the overarching plot. This stage is a good time to award ability points and transition the party into their new destination, preferably with some good old classic narration. When it comes to the encounters, there could be some forced encounters such as water. A flash flood or sunken tunnel section bars the party's path. Whatever the peril, an underwater encounter is unavoidable. When it comes to voluntary encounters, you have things such as fauna. Predators are lurking nearby. Maybe they won't attack unless they smell food, or they are hungry and will be forced to take on the party out of desperation. And of course there are many other instances that I won't mention in order to avoid spoilers. And this concludes this part of the review, in the next part we are going to talk about environments and dungeoneering. Travel is a very straightforward process, but when it comes to these encounters, they rely heavily on context of course. It would be nonsensical for you to expect 
that you are underwater and suddenly the underwater section becomes flooded if that section is already drowned by the waters. Rather, it would have to be some sort of underground tunnel underneath the waters that is still dry and then it becomes flooded. Thank you for watching this part of the review. Don't forget to leave a like, a comment and subscribe. And thank you so much to those of you that are going the extra mile to support the channel. If anyone else wishes to further support the channel through PayPal or Drive4RPG, the information will be in the description and in the pinned comment. This has been Abraham L. Jaguar, a professional game master. I am currently unavailable for professional sessions, but I will put my contact information in the description and in the pinned comment for when I am available again. And remember, it is better to roleplay and fail in character than not to roleplay and fail as a player. Once again, thank you and see you later.